Okay, we're going to graph the sine function, and here's our old friend, the unit circle here, and uh, the cosine of if I, if I, let's see how I should say this, if I take a, an angle theta and I run a ray, the uh, terminal side out to the uh, unit circle, then the x value is the cosine of that angle, and the y value is the sine of that angle. So, uh, the domain, obviously, they can go around uh, 2 pi and keep going around and around forever, or it can go negative and go around and around forever, and the whole thing repeats every 2 pi units, whether you go this way or go this way. So my domain really, in terms of theta, is negative infinity all the way to infinity. Now my range, this is the y value on the unit circle, and I notice the y values only go from negative 1 to 1. That's it. So my range is uh, negative 1. It includes negative 1, though. Negative 1 and 1. Of course, with the infinities, they're always round brackets and never included. Okay. So um, now I've got my domain and my range. And I'm going to go down here and graph it. I've got theta axis there and the sine axis up here. This is the sine. You give me a theta and I put the dot at what the value of the sine is. And, of course, we start here at 0. We all know the sine of 0 is 0, like this. And as the angle moves like this, the y value is getting bigger and bigger until it hits 1. So I have a, a 1 here at pi over 2. When the angle goes to pi over 2, the y value is 1. Here it's 0, at 0. And then as it moves from pi over 2 like this over to uh, pi, uh, my sine goes back to 0 again. Okay? And then as it moves this way, uh, from pi all the way to 3 pi over 2, it goes from 0 to negative 1. So it goes down here to negative 1. I should mark this as a negative 1 here. I should mark this as 1. And here, here's the sign right here. So, so far we've got this, right, kind of movement. And then when it moves from uh, uh, 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi, the y value goes from negative 1 to 0. And that's the sign, of course, that y value. So it goes like this. Oops, let me make that a little better. There it is. And this wave is what we call the fundamental wave of the sine. And notice, of course, that as it goes around to 2 pi, then the whole thing starts all over again. And so this is the period, one period, of the sine function. And they call this the fundamental wave, this one from 0 to 2 pi. And the period of a sine is 2 pi. Now, this goes on forever, of course. I mean, it gets here, and then it goes, you know, around, does the same thing over again. Going negative. What we have here is we start our sine is 0, and we're going down from 0 to negative pi over 2, and our sine goes down to negative 1 here. And then as it goes from uh, negative pi over 2 to negative pi, it goes back to 0. And then it, it's going from uh, 0 to negative pi to negative 3 pi over 2, or negative 270, and we're back at 1, aren't we? Sine is 1, so I'll put a 1 here. And then when it moves from, or all the way around from negative uh, 2 pi over 3, two, excuse me, 3 pi over 2, <laughs> that's 270, all the way to uh, negative 2 pi, it goes back to 0. So it looks like this. Of course, it continues in the same way, like this. And this is a graph of the sine function. Notice that it's an odd function, the side function. That is, the, if you took this and reflected across the um, y-axis, or the vertical axis and reflect it again, you would have the, um, you'd get the other side. And this makes it a, uh, an odd function. And just for the heck of it, I mean, we call it, that nothing is harmed by changing the names of these axes. And normally we call this the x-axis and we call this the y-axis. And these x and y's have nothing to do with these x and y's, by the way. But this is how you graph y equals the sine of x.